I don't know. It doesn't. Ah, there we go. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so I'll be talking about something that uh, is a little special. It's about basically using some uh, some uh, embedded systems to actually do some design. And the reason I'm going to talk about that is that uh, uh, we've been supporting a uh, a uh, container solution to do computer vision and machine learning for a while, but uh, we are, we have started moving it to the edge, right? Uh, or at least on edge device. So uh, what's a Jetson Nano? Well, Jetson Nano is basically a uh, a small device. Uh, think of it about the size of a, a little bigger than a Raspberry Pi, uh, but instead of uh, having basically just a CPU, it's a four core ARM processor, ARM sixty four V eight. Uh, and it has 128 core Maxwell GPU uh, with four gig of memory. Now, uh, for those interested, the uh, CUDA compute is 5.3. Uh, we are at 8.6 currently, so you know it's not the most recent uh, hardware. Uh, what that means is that uh, you have CUDA 10.2 and you have CUDA DNN 8.0 if you're interested in playing with those. Uh, the uh, the S the SD card uh, that you would use to uh, to install the software uh, basically provides you with a Ubuntu 18.04 with some pre-installed software. Uh, if you're interested, those devices are actually fairly cheap. Uh, you know, they are 100 bucks. Uh, they need a four amp power supply if you want to put them in max and mode. So that's a 20 watt power consumption, uh, and they'll be able to do a fairly efficient. Uh, uh, computer vision and a tiny bit of machine learning. So, for example, if you wanted to run a YOLO with a tiny weight, it would work. Uh, so, why, why, why am I going with that? Well, so in the past, a few of us have heard me uh, talk about that uh, CUDA TensorFlow OpenCV containers that uh, we have made available to uh, to the world a few years back. Uh, that container uh, provides you with both a CPU and a GPU optimized version. Uh, for uh, OpenCV and TensorFlow, everything is compiled from source. It takes on uh, it takes uh, on a 32 core uh, piece of hardware over an hour to compile any one of those. So it's a it's a monster to compile, right? Um, we build it with a ton of extra goodies, and I, by extra goodies, you have a ton of toolkits. Like you have PyTorch, you have other things that are built into the base. Uh, if you want to know more about it, you can go to the GitHub, look into the build info, and you'll have a ton of information about OpenCV and TensorFlow. Uh, the images are available on Docker Hub, uh, and we have two flavors. We have the CPU-only version, and we have the GPU-only version. Uh, the GPU version, the CUDA DNN, has been uh, downloaded over 10,000 times by now. I've heard a lot of uh, feedback from actually uh, Researcher and students that are using them uh, for uh, uh, for their projects uh, because you know it's a container. You basically start a container. You can use it. You can deploy in it, and you can you don't have to. Uh, and I use the term pollute, but you don't have to install anything specific on your system. The DNN version will work uh, as long as you have the uh, required NVIDIA drivers installed. Uh, for example, I use it personally a lot when I do computer vision because I. Don't want to have a uh, version of OpenCV just install that and uh, you know and have to do all the Python binding. Uh, I'll basically uh, start my container uh, and uh, I'll mount uh, I'll mount slash DMC, which is a default mount uh, uh, in PWD. Uh, so I'm whatever I'm doing in my code, uh, I can just run the code with Python directly uh, in the bin bash. Uh, very useful for that. More interestingly, uh, you develop on CPU, i.e., I work on my Mac, uh, and then when I'm done, I can basically just port it to my uh, to my server slash uh, desktop if I want, in order to uh, to do to test the GPU side of things. You know, you you you, you test and then you can deploy. Uh, all you have to do is realistically uh, tell the uh, OpenCV TensorFlow backend to use the GPU and change the from from the TensorFlow OpenCV version to the CUDA DNN TensorFlow OpenCV version. Uh, so uh, that's great, but why the Jetson Nano? Well, we have a Jetson Nano version. Uh, we designed that one about a year ago. Uh, and the reasoning behind it was that uh, we were working on projects that enabled us to do uh, 
when we're trying to do computer vision at the edge, right? Uh, and uh, by the edge, I meant, OK, you can put a camera or you can, uh, you can collect device and uh, push information as much as possible uh, without having to push the data. Uh, most of the time, you don't care about the video, but you care about the analytics that comes with the video and the uh, frame that would be detected with that. So uh, the Jetson Nano was available. So the NVIDIA was providing a, a base container we could work on. So we started uh, doing exactly that. Uh, same idea as the non-Jetson Nano version. Uh, you can work di directly out of the box, click for prototype. Uh, but the Nanos are small enough to be used in a headless mod uh, to do some specific computer vision uh, applications. So for public safety, we want to know, uh, for example, dist distance tracking. Uh, you know, COVID is a good example lately. Uh, you're able to uh, follow groups of people and see if somebody splits. Uh, for uh, for other example, you can also run my, uh, minimalistic object detection uh, and object recognition. Uh, like once again, it's it, you only have four gig of memory on this thing. So, uh, but uh, if you look at the little uh, uh, H similar to H top uh, under, you'll see that uh, we are. Uh, e we have four CPUs and one GPU with four gig of memory. So we can really make something uh, further than just a Raspberry Pi, for example. So for people that are you know, Raspberry Pi uh, friendly, uh, this, if you can see it, is my old uh, Docker Swarm cluster, right? It's been repurposed to be a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but I have, uh, I have something that I want to show you in a minute. Um, Example of use is very simple. Uh, for example, I'm going to do a from data machine, Jetson Nano, CUDA TensorFlow OpenCV, and I'm going to pull Darknet uh, from, uh, from the source, build it, uh, tell it that I want to build it with uh, GPU, OpenCV, OpenMP, uh, LibSO, uh, and uh, specify that I want my uh, compute architecture to be 5.3. Uh, and then I'm going to have the Darknet client available on my uh, Jetson Nano directly out of the box. Now, once again, I said earlier, you likely want to use tiny weights uh, because of the memory available. Uh, you know, if you have four gig, you're not gonna you're not gonna run a a full uh, 150 or 160 object recognition algorithm. Uh, but uh, you can build it, you can run it, uh, and you can do object detection on that super tiny device at about 10 to 12 frames per second uh, uh, with a headless mode. So for the purpose I was mentioning earlier, it's uh, it's functional. So if we go to uh, where we're going with that, you know, little little stack here, uh, that actually is a little research stack that uh, we have in the office uh, using Jetson Nano. Idea is very simple. You have a router. Uh, we want to make sure that we have network separation. We can do IP res reservation, and we can do an SSH proxy uh, jump host uh, from the router. Uh, we have a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi basically serves K3S. Uh, so you know uh, you've heard you've heard uh, Ryan talk about Kubernetes. Uh, just like uh, MicroStack is available for ARM64, you're not going to run, uh, and I run it on my desktop. Uh, I'm not running a, uh, a K3S on uh, on an ARM64 with four gig of memory. But K3S is a very very lightweight version of Kubernetes uh, that still gives you access to the kubectl. So we have a Raspberry Pi whose entire purpose is to run the uh, server of K3S uh, and run the uh, Docker registry. And then you have four Jetson Nanos, if you can look, if you see on that picture, uh, that are headless uh, and are basically uh, running the NVIDIA runtime for Docker. Uh, we use the Docker backend, by the way, because this way uh, that uh, push every Kubernetes uh, client to basically always use the GPU, whatever, whatever they want. And we can run workloads for uh, using the Jetson Nano uh, and CUDA containers that I just uh, mentioned. So, uh, and I know Blair, you were mentioning you were looking at a conversation about Edge. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's my uh, presentation. Uh, we are going to have a blog post uh, as well as a full setup guide uh, for all those components uh, available uh, in the near future, uh, just not currently available. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll take questions.